Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 7th, and right now we're looking at the Langley Doppler radar. You can see a few showers off the coastline here. There's a weak disturbance going to slide across the area. Going to bring some thunderstorms mainly east of the Cascades with it. Could ring out a couple showers, maybe west of the Cascades here. And you can see a few of them, like I said, ongoing here. Let's just go ahead and look at the mid-level water vapor loop, and you can see the spin in the atmosphere there. A fairly weak system here. And the next stronger one is out here. It looks like it may come at towards the end of the weekend, but it's downgrading a little bit here, not bringing much precipitation in towards western Washington or Oregon, but we'll take a look at those details, as always, coming up here. Take a look at Category 5 Hurricane Jova down there. It actually looks like it's going through some kind of an eyewall replacement cycle here and losing a little bit of steep convection. It's probably not going to be a Category 5 hurricane for a long. Plus, it's moving towards much cooler water off to the northwest there, so you probably heard about that in some of the social media reports. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10 percent off to record all the crazy weather we get here in the pacific northwest this is taking a look at the atmospheric river scale as you can see this next system incoming here through the end of the weekend it is extremely weird here barely even qualifies as an atmospheric river just barely so and not even really worth mentioning just trying to get you guys a little bit more acclimated with the atmospheric river scale as we'll definitely be dealing with some stronger systems as we go through the fall and winter months take a look at bc not doing too bad air quality index wise probably the best they've had actually in the last couple of months and there are still some fires on going across Washington and Oregon, but generally overall the air quality index is quite good. You can see as you go east of the Rockies, that's a different story though, across some of the Dakotas down towards Nebraska, Kansas, and eastern Montana, also not doing too well. Looking at SeaTac yesterday, 74 degrees. That is the average high, pretty much picture perfect average day here for early September for western Washington. No precipitation, and hopefully we can ring out maybe a little bit today or as we go towards the end of the weekend here, but not much in sight right now. Showers and thunderstorms. National Weather Service Spokane calling attention to this as this weak system tracks across the area tonight into Friday morning. Southeast Washington, Idaho Panhandle, and you can see typical thunderstorm threats. Here we go with that thunderstorm outlook here. Generally, eastern Washington does include Pendleton and Spokane here off through Boise, Missoula, Butte, Great Falls. This will be day two, and as you go out in through Montana, you can get a wind, a severe wind threat out there, mainly Butte off towards the east here. Now, looking at total precipitation in inches on last night's European run, you can see as this system tracks across late this morning, this afternoon, again, mainly cascades to the east, but it does kick off maybe a few showers here if we're really lucky across some of western Washington, maybe extreme a south portion of Vancouver Island there. But you can see some of this precipitation across the Blue Mountains, northeast Washington, Idaho, and Montana as that pushes off to the east. And then the next system starts arriving here, and you can see it impact western BC, but you see some of these precipitation values have gone down. Still better chances north you go Vancouver Island and Vancouver Island will probably get some decent rain along the immediate coastline here. Maybe the Washington coast of the Olympics but not showing much here for western Washington or Oregon or even for southwest BC for that matter as we go through Tuesday night. This is total precipitation in inches on the 3 km NAM. You can see a few showers trying to kick off here across some of western Washington as we go through the afternoon. You'll see some of this activity fire off across Idaho and Montana here. Not showing too much until later tonight across some of the Blue Mountains higher terrain of Oregon and you can see it does kick off as we go through this evening as well. Some of the Cascades might even get a thunderstorm out of this also. And maybe see the Olympic Mountains even too. It's showing up in some of the high resolution models here. We'll see how that goes. But not an overly strong system here. Um, definitely better amounts as you go on through Montana towards the eastern portions there. This is looking at the GFS here. So we're looking at 500 millibar heights. There's Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon there. There's that weak system right now. Way to the south there is that Hurricane Jova as it continues its northwest track here off into cooler waters but you can see the ridge we're going to build as we go through the weekend here so we're going to warm things up as this next trough sets up over the gulf of alaska with that next system but again it's downtrending a little bit here swings that weak system through ridge pushes off to the east and then we're going to kind of be going back and forth between some ridging periods and some troughing periods kind of typical for september here I'll also show you the European neck showing something interesting here. As you can see on the 10 day plus period, this, you know, kind of some stronger ridge and looking to build in there. But ridges at that time of the year usually don't hang on too long. But then again, another ridge builds up over the Pacific Northwest all the way out into the fantasy land here on the GFS. Now looking here in the European, this is yesterday afternoon's run, so this goes way out about 15 days. Take a look at that weak system moving through there, then we start to build the ridge. Nice warm weekend coming up here. System tries to swing by Vancouver Island here, as we talked about. 
And then you can see kind of a mixed bag there. And we start to build another kind of ridge here, but it pushes off to the east. Weak trough swings through. But watch out in the fantasy land on the European there towards 300 hours. Look at this monster ridge building here on the European model. And who knows if there's anything to this as of right now. It's just something we're going to watch. But that is just a massive ridge here across the Gulf of Alaska into southern Alaska here in the extended. Something very interesting to watch here. And you know the GFS showing some stronger ridging through this period as well. So it's something to watch for sure. But nothing to get too alarmed about right now. We have plenty of time to watch that develop. Here's Seattle. Look at the nice weekend coming up here. Then kind of hovering just above average as we go through next week. Spokane something similar there. Seattle Metro on the GFS showing some lower 80s showing up for Saturday, Sunday. Get out there and enjoy that. And that wheat trough will swing through. But we might not be done with the warm weather yet. As you saw, there could be some ridging in our extended forecast here across the Pacific Northwest. Spokane, something similar here. This is Seattle Tacoma. May we squeeze a couple hundredths of an inch out as we go through the day today. Cross your fingers. And that next system, like I mentioned, is downtrending in some of the precipitation and amounts. Maybe we'll get lucky and, and ring out a few hundredths of an inch out of that one. Here's Hoquiam, Washington coast, maybe a just a tiny bit of rain here today and then a little bit better chances as you go towards the coastline versus interior sections for that next system as we go on and through Sunday night. This would be Tillamook Airport. Not much showing up here. Just a couple chances here. Very light precipitation overall. Nootka Station, Heliopad up there on the Vancouver Island coastline here and you can see better chances up there but it is a downtrend from yesterday also and kind of looking off into the extended for some wind with that system as well. Maybe a little bit of blustery conditions on the uh, Vancouver Island, a little bit of a taste of fall, and you can see where that location is there on Vancouver Island. Taking a look at the national blend of models for today, probably some low 70s for Seattle, mm -hmm. mid 70s for the Willamette Valley. You know, not a bad day here up through southwest BC as well as that weak system tracks across. We start to bounce these temperatures back here. Look at Saturday and Sunday, probably going up towards 80 degrees, probably underestimating the temperatures here for Seattle a little bit here. But look at this mid 80s, maybe even some upper 80s for some of Portland here. And nice and warm eastern Washington before a little bit of a cool down as that system swings by and that ridge moves off towards the east. Uh, this is looking at Astoria, looking way off into Fantasyland, 15 days out. Not one stitch of any kind of a sign of a windstorm here off in our extended future. Six to ten day temperature probability. The potential for some ridging exists, and that's probably why we are above average here across much of the west. And you can see eight to 14 day, even some increased confidence here across a lot of the Pacific Northwest as well. Six to ten day precipitation. Not looking too hot as far as rain chances are going across the region. And this is the drought compared to weeks. I really couldn't see any difference here except just some extreme drought introduced across some of north central Montana there. But for the most part, looks like the rest of the area kind of left alone and kind of a noteworthy thing there. Looking at California, almost completely drought free except the extreme northwest tip. Uh, this is looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly. So this is looking at the equatorial Pacific, you South America, maritime continent is there. So you can see this is the water right off of South America here and it's a running timeline. We're looking all the way back towards February 12th and you can see the last gasp of La Nina out there is waving bye-bye. It's almost completely off the chart now. And you can clearly see the warm-up we've been going over here the last few months. And this is going to continue as this El Nino is developing. We're probably into strong territory technically right now. And I am going to be doing an update here in the next few days. We're going to get some new data. I'll go over El Nino, what it is, what kind of circulation pattern it means for the Pacific Ocean, and what we can expect for the west coast of North America here also. And if I put this into motion, you can clearly see the increase in temperature there across the equatorial Pacific as La Nina is now just kind of a distant memory here in the very warm water along the south coast of South America continues to emerge across the equatorial Pacific. So interesting stuff there. I'll be doing a video separate on El Nino here in the next few days or so. But yeah, little system swinging by here, build a ridge. Another system will try to approach here. And there's some fantasy ridges off in the extended there as well. So we'll look at everything again tomorrow. And I hope you guys are liking these videos. Um, I'll, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.